My name is Dr. Thomas Barrows, and I've been a practicing physician for 25 years. Um, and about 15 years ago, uh, my next door neighbor and childhood friend who had become a tattoo artist approached me with an interesting proposition. He wanted to put a tattoo removal laser in his tattoo shop and nobody had ever done that before, and he needed a physician to be involved. And so I, I got interested in that, and I started learning about the tattoo industry and the tattoo community at large. And, and what I found out was that um, many people don't really want to be rid of their tattoos. They actually have just watched the evolution of the art. So as this, this new artwork was evolving, people were feeling kind of stranded and left behind with the tattoos that they had. And so what we did was, in putting a tattoo removal laser in a tattoo shop, we started lightening tattoos to facilitate cover-ups or allow people to put um, new art in place of where there were old ones. So we didn't go into the space with the idea that we we're somehow going to go out there and, and obliterate or remove artwork in the world, but um, we were allowing artists to actually facilitate better artwork. So that was a really interesting angle. We were the first or maybe the second tattoo shop in the United States to do that. So to understand how it works, you have to know how you get a tattoo in the first place, okay? So tattoo needles typically inject ink under the skin to a, you know, a depth of so many millimeters. And once it's there, the immune system almost immediately attacks it and starts gobbling it up and carrying it away. But what tends to happen is certain types of fibroblasts and macrophages will, will gobble up that ink and then they just sort of become fixed in place with it. So the ink that is sort of floating around in the extracellular space eventually can get carried away. But the ink that gets encapsulated or trapped inside cells is there to stay. So in order to remove a tattoo, we somehow have to liberate the ink that's trapped inside those cells and get it back into that extracellular environment to give the immune system another shot, so to speak, to get rid of it. The earlier lasers that were used to try to get that ink out um, had fairly long pulses, so there was, when you think about cooking a turkey in the oven, right, you cook it slow and long, um, so the heat gradually gets sort of everywhere. Well, you don't want that in tattoo removal. You don't want all that heat. You really only want a shock wave right where the tattoo ink is to fracture it and liberate it from the cell. So those old lasers that had really long pulses, they would have a cook time, and heat would spread from the ink not just into the cell, but to the cells around it, and, and you would have a lot of collateral damage. So if you look back at you know tattoo removal from 20 years ago, there's often really bad blistering, and scarring was something that could be seen from these older lasers. And as the technology has progressed forward, what we're endeavoring to do is have the absolute shortest on time for the laser that you can possibly have. And so we've gone from milliseconds to microseconds, which is, you know, millisecond is a thousandth of a second, now to microseconds, which is a millionth of a second. And then the technology that's widely been used for a long time uh, are, are nanosecond lasers. Nanoseconds are billionths of a second, which is really incredibly short. But in spite of that, even with nanosecond lasers, you still get some spillover heat. So the next generation beyond nanosecond lasers is an extraordinarily fast laser called a picosecond laser. A picosecond is literally a trillionth of a second. So with such extraordinarily short pulses, there's not a cook time. There's not time for heat to spill over into the surrounding tissues. So what you find is you're able to concentrate more energy into a shorter period of time and it creates a shock wave that shatters the ink instead of cooking it in the cells around it. So we've seen complications um, go down, down, down until the point where these lasers are basically non-ablative lasers. That means we're not tearing up the skin. We're really selectively targeting the tattoo ink and, and minimizing collateral damage around it. You know, faster is better and faster again may still be better. Um, a femtosecond is almost hard to conceptualize. A femtosecond is a quadrillionth of a second. Uh, most people don't really know quadrillion, so it's easier actually to say um, 
you know, a million billion or billion millions. It's unbelievably small. We think hypothetically that a femtosecond um, will uh, be superior to a picosecond, but there really aren't good clinical trials because there isn't a device on the market yet that does that. But that is one of the things that we look at. So, so part of my role here with Removery is to evaluate new technologies. And so that is one of the things that we're looking at towards the future. How can we make this even better yet than the technology we presently have? You know, a clinical advisory board is actually a group of experts that meets to evaluate technologies and medical information for the benefit of our customers. Um, rather than simply follow a script that never changes, we are constantly looking at ways to improve our process. Um, that's not something salespeople do, that's not something the front desk person does. You need a group of, of physicians and scientists to do that. So we can draw from dermatologists, plastic surgeons, um, physicians like myself who have many, many years in the trenches doing tattoo removal, and we can evaluate what we're all doing and how to harmonize what we do so that it's the best for our customers. If you go into a one-off hamburger shop, you're gonna get a different hamburger, potentially from the hamburger shop down the street. And maybe you like one, maybe you don't like the other. The Bloody Marys aren't always the same from one hotel bar to the next. And what we're trying to do is actually so that when you go into a removery anywhere in the country, you're getting the best possible technology that we can offer you the best practices that we can offer you in a way that's been evaluated not by one or two physicians but by a whole panel of physicians who are up to date with the current literature and in the scale of removery we're able to do that in a way that small one-off laser tattoo removal businesses won't be able to. So I think that's the strength of removery in our clinical advisory board is you, you have a whole bunch of experts standing behind what we're doing to treat you.